Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Philip, Midday Meditation. I am Carolyn Williams, Canon Associate for Pastoral Care and Elder Ministries. I am pleased to be here with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose spirit guides us into all truth and makes us free, strengthen and sustain us as you did your servants in Elizabeth, Amelia, Sojourner, and Harriet. Give us vision and courage to stand against oppression and injustice and all that works against the glorious liberty to which you call all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture appointed for today is from the Book of Wisdom. For wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her pureness, she pervades and penetrates all things. For she is a breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her. For she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. Although she is but one, she can do all things, and while remaining in herself, she renews all things. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves nothing so much as the person who lives with wisdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we are acknowledging and honoring the lives of four women. These women are written about in the book Lesser Feast and Fast, and this day, July 20th, is the day of acknowledgement and celebration of the four women that we just prayed for. They are Elizabeth Candy Stanton, Amelia Jinx Bloomer, Sojourner Truth, and Harriet Tubman. These women possessed and used their gifts and talents to move forward the cause of others in society, especially women. These four women had vision, they had courage, and they stood against oppression and injustice. Their years of birth were 1815, 1818, 1779, and 1820, and so you see how far back we are going. They were strengthened and sustained throughout their lives. When it came to being scrutinized by others, they didn't really pay that much attention to it. You can tell by what their legacy is. They viewed themselves as equal to the next human, period. When we look at the time in which they came into this world and we hear about their endeavors in life, it is without question they met opposition from women and from men. Elizabeth dedicated her life to righting the wrongs perpetrated upon women by the church and perpetrated by society. She held the church accountable for oppressing, oppressing women by using scripture to enforce subordination of women in marriage and to prohibit them from ordination in, in ministry. She held society accountable for denying access to professional jobs, ownership of property, the vote, and for granting less pay for the same work. She also blamed the male clergy for women's oppression. She attended 
Trinity Episcopal Church in Seneca Falls with her friend, Amelia Bloomer. Amelia is the second woman that we are looking at. She published a newspaper that she owned called The Lily. Faith and fashion for Amelia collided and exploded when she published a paper, in her paper rather, a picture of herself wearing loose-fitting Turkish trousers. Clergy from the pulpit attacked women in life, just in general. One said, women should not dress like men. Sojourner Belle Truth was a house slave for the first 28 years of her life. She was sold from household to household. She fled slavery with the help of Quaker friends, first living in Philadelphia and then New York. She joined the Mother Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church when African Americans were denied the right to worship with white members of St. George's Church in Philadelphia. Sojourner became an evangelist and would preach on street corners. She realized the community had many needs, such as food, clothing, and shelter. She heard God say to her to go east, and she did so. She set out for going east to Long Island, New York, and Connecticut. She stopped at a Quaker farm to get water for herself, and while there was asked her last name. She told them that she was no longer a slave and she wasn't using a slave name. She said, God is now my master, and his name is Truth. So, Sojourner Truth, is my name. She became a traveling preacher. Doing a women's rights convention in Ohio, she gave a speech for which she is most remembered entitled, Ain't I a Woman? Not a question, but a statement. Ain't I a Woman? She had listened for hours to oppressive language from clergy attacking women's rights and abolition. The logic was this, God created women to be weak and blacks to be a subservient race. Our fourth woman is Harriet Tubman. Slave births during her time were recorded under property, not as persons with names. She was born sometime during 1820 on a Maryland Chesapeake Bay plantation. The sixth of 11 children born to Mount Ben Ross and Harriet Green. Her parents lived in fear of their children being sold off at any time. Harriet suffered beatings and was severely injured. However, she grew up strong and defiant. About age 24, she escaped to Canada, but could not forget her parents and other slaves who had been left behind. Working with the Quakers, she made at least 19 trips back to Maryland between 1851 and 1861, freeing over 300 people. She was so successful, $40,000 was offered for her capture. Guided by God, though, through omens, dreams, and warnings, her struggle against slavery had been commanded by God. We are told that she foresaw the Civil War in a vision. And although illiterate, she founded schools for African-American orphans. She opened her home to homeless and older people. She joined the fight for women's rights, working with Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. She also supported African American women in their efforts to found their own organizations to dress equality, work, 
and education. So we have these four women who had in common courage and strength, but most of all, their faith. And in doing so, they were able to leave their legacy, not only for women, not only for those who were disenfranchised, but their place stands today in history as women who were strong, women who had strength, women who believed in the humanness of another. Amen. I invite you at this time to pause for just a moment for intercessions and prayer. Let us pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you and let him lift his countenance upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace in the name of the Father. Amen.